Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 50. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, BI 348 Chapter 4, or the PowerPoint file, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to have an introduction to multiple regression. Now, so far in this chapter, we've done a lot with simple linear regression. We calculated the slope, the intercept, r squared, and other measures. Hey, let's go over briefly to our PowerPoints. We're going to have an estimated regression equation, whereas earlier we had simple for one independent variable. Now we're going to have multiple regression. And here's our equation. There's y hat. We're going to have slope 1 times x1 plus slope 2 times x2 plus all the way to our last slope and x value plus some y intercept. Now we're going to jump back over to Excel. Now two videos ago, we saw how to use data, data analysis regression feature to calculate all sorts of statistics for us, including our slope and intercept. So that's what we're going to do here. Now here's our data set, annual credit card charges. That's our y value. That's going to be the value we're going to try and predict with our equation. And our x1 is going to be annual income. X2 will be number of years post high school education. So we'd like to build an equation that can predict based on these two inputs. So if an application comes in and says 50,000 with two years of post high school education, we want to be able to estimate what their annual credit charges will be. All right, so we're going to use the data analysis feature, data, data analysis. And over here, there's regression. And I cl click OK. Now, Y input, I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace to jump back up. There's our full range tab. And now there's our X values. And differently than earlier in the class where we only had one, we're totally allowed to put two X variables in. Highlight the labels, Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace. So there's our X ranges for the B and C column. Now, we definitely want labels at the top because our output is hard to read unless we label everything. So I'm going to check this that says, yes, we have labels in our data set. Confidence interval, I'm going to change this to 90 from 95 to 99. We're not going to talk about this till hypothesis testing next video. But we put a 99 here because if we don't, it'll just the output will deliver two confidence intervals, both at 95. We definitely want our residuals, and we definitely want residual plots, which we'll use for the first time next video. But that's how our dialog box is going to look when we run multiple regression. Now, the output range, I'm going to click right in F1, make sure I got my ranges, click OK. Now, it says some data will be hidden because I have some stuff over here. One of the charts will appear on top of it. That's OK, so I'm going to click OK. Now, with our output from the regression feature, we usually have to highlight all of the columns and double click between any two columns and best fit all of the columns. Now, I'm going to drag the first residual plot down here and the second one down here. And we will talk about these next videos. That's amazing how that it just spits those out. We don't have to manually calculate those. And I'm going to drag this over. So I'm going to highlight and point to the edge. And when I see my move cursor, I'm going to click and drag. Now here's our output. And we talked about most of this in the, the two videos ago. There's our R correlation. There's our R squared. Now that is 53%. So it's not as strong as some of our other examples we had. But it means that 53 or about 54% of the variation in y can be explained by our model or our equation. There's our standard error, our number of observations. And down here, here's our intercept. There's slope number 1 and slope number 2. So up here, here's our equation. It says y hat and annual income. So that means. Since we're trying to predict annual credit card charges, 14 and a half pennies of annual credit card charge will increase for every $1 of annual income. Now, when you're talking about a slope and an x, you actually hold 
the other variable fixed while you change this one. So for every $1 of annual income while we hold the other variable fixed that we increase, total credit card charges for the year will increase by about 14 and a half pennies. Similarly over here when we hold this one fixed, for every one year of post high school education that we increase, the annual charges will be predicted to go up by about $771. Now just as we did earlier, when we go to plug in a value to make a prediction, we have to make sure that we look at the min and max for that particular variable. So for our prediction with our equation, when we put a number in for annual income, it's got to be between the min and max, so about 10,000 to 135,000. Similarly, for X2, that's number of post high school years education, the min was 1 and the max was 0. So when you plug something in here, we got to make sure to be between those two values. Now we can make our equation equals, and I'm going to take slope 1 times, and there's our x value, plus slope number 2, that's the 771, times the x2 input for that, plus our y-intercept. And when I hit Enter, our prediction for this particular applicant who said they had 54,000 annual income, two years post high school education, the estimate will be 7,529. The next applicant says they had 190,000 and zero years. Neither one of those are allowed for our model. They don't fit into our experimental range. Control Z, Z. So we want to make sure to put inputs in that match the evidence that we have collected over here. So 69,500 with four years of post high school education, annual charges estimated or predicted to be about 11,000. Now we want to go look at a second example. And we want to notice something about all of the x's and y's that we've done throughout all the videos in this chapter. They're all quantitative or numbers. We need to see what happens if you have a categorical variable. So we're going to go over to the sheet categorical. Now, here's our data set. We actually would like to predict percentage of risk of a stroke over the next 10 years. That'll be our y value we're trying to predict. And we've collected data on age, blood pressure, whether or not they're a smoker, yes or no, and then the actual current risk. Now, the trick is when we have categorical data like this is to convert it to a number. So we're going to convert yes to 1 and no to 0. So we need to add an extra column. And when we run it, we'll have three x's and one y. This will not be included. But it's going to serve as our lookup. So I'm going to use VLOOKUP. We're going to look up the categorical variable for smoker, either yes or no, comma. Table is going to be this table right here, and F4 to lock it. Comma, the second column has the thing I want to go get and bring back, and it's called a dummy variable. So I'm going to type a 2, comma, this is it is sorted, but I'm going to keep it as exact match because we're looking up a word, and I'm not going to put false. I'm going to put a 0. Either one is fine, 0 or false. Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. Now, this is going to be x3, and it will do something interesting to our equation once we get our slopes. Because if it's no, then 0 times whatever the slope is for the x will be 0. It's only when we get our yes, and it will be 1 times whatever our slope is. All right, so let's go ahead, click somewhere in our data set. We have data, data analysis. There's our regression. Click OK. Now notice it's trying to be polite and remember from our last example, but it is not correct. So I'm going to make sure and highlight the Y tab. And there it's not correct at all. I'm going to highlight three labels and then all of the records. Labels, confidence interval, output range is not correct. I'm going to highlight this and click, say, J1, residual and residual plots. 
When I click OK, I have some stuff off to the side. It'll be OK. The charts will be on top of it when I click OK. Notice I already have the correct column widths here. Now I'm going to click and drag these. Again, we'll use these when we check our assumptions for our least square method and then do hypothesis testing next video. Now let's look at our output. R squared says that about 82% of the variability in Y can be explained by our regression equation. If we look down here, we have intercept and one, two, three different slopes. Now notice we mentioned that if you don't have field names, it's really hard to interpret this. It's so nice that we have our labels right here. But there it is, the slope for age, blood pressure, and smoker. Now, as I said, something interesting happens with a categorical variable. Remember that x sub 3 can either be 0 or 1. Now, I want to go over and to our PowerPoints where I've typed out the equation. Here's our output down here. And here's the full equation, y hat, and holding the other two variables constant as we increase age by one year, the stroke risk factor goes up by 0.835. Holding the other variables constant as blood pressure, and I can see I, I misspelled that, as blood pressure goes up by one point, the risk goes up by 0.228. And here's our smoker variable. Now think about this. This can be 0 or 1. And that means that we'll, in essence, have two different equations. Now, it's fine. This equation here will work. You just put in the 0 or 1 and calculate it, right? But look what happens if we're a smoker. Here it is down here. So the same equation. But if that's 1, it's 1 times 10.61. So 10.61. And again, that's the slope. That means that's how many points it goes up if you're a smoker. But that is a constant if you're a smoker. So you'd simply subtract the y-intercept. And this would actually be the equation if you're a smoker. So the first two are the same. But because this is 1, it's a constant, we add it to the slope. So the slope would go from minus 72.51 down to minus 61.9. Now here's the y hat if you're a non-smoker. We just leave that x3 variable off because we know it's a 0. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use data, data analysis regression feature to generate our statistics for multiple regression. We saw a data set where we wanted to predict percentage risk of stroke given age, blood pressure, and smoker, a categorical variable. And then back on MR1, we saw a data set where we wanted to predict annual credit card charges with 2x annual income and years post high school education. All right, next video, we'll see how to test our assumptions for the least square method and run hypothesis testing to see if it's reasonable or not to use these as our sample statistics and our regression equation. All right, we'll see you next video.